What's up everybody and welcome back to, uh, we we'll call this a bonus episode of the week because we're just going to do straight blood work. So welcome to like five years on steroids. So context to the blood work was on full blast, primo test, growth hormone, insulin, like eight weeks ago. Uh, came off that and done my clearance period which takes about four or five weeks and then a recovery period of four or five weeks. Though you can still recover over that initial clearance period as well. So this is blood work like eight weeks on 60 milligrams of testosterone, 80 milligrams of Primo every other day. So it's about 200, 250, 200 tests, 250 Primo. So this is not like a true TRT. This is not like a true off cycle either. This is like IFBB Pro, five years on steroids, 120 kilos cruise. This is not what you should do. This is what I do. And this is not recommendations or encouragement to anyone to take this path. I almost discourage it for a lot of people unless it's gonna be your entire life. Also five IUs of growth hormone, which is important to know just for other things. So we'll just go through it. I don't wanna beat around the bush. Um, I'm just gonna go top to bottom here so you guys can just read what I'm reading. So first of all, HbA1c, this is hemoglobin A1c, which is basically like a snapshot of your blood sugar over like 90 days. So you really want this to be between 4.5 and 5.6. Getting close to 5.6 is starting to creep into pre-diabetic. Obviously using growth hormone, this number might be a little bit higher than usual and also a bit using growth hormone before bed and also upon waking. That might well be why my number is 5.4, which is still in range. So I'm not pre-diabetic or diabetic. It is relatively creeping up, but this actually comes with an estimated average blood glucose, which is way below what the recommended uh, reference range is here. So that is also important to know. It's also important to know that the hemoglobin part of A1C, the hemoglobin, red blood cells, if you've got high red blood cells, you know, which relatively we'll see that I do, you might have higher blood sugar because you've got more of it. But this has been pretty much like the same every time I ever do it. So this is not a cause for concern for me. Um, as I scroll down here, we've got urea, blood urea, creatinine, uric acid, CRP, creating kinases, kidney markers. So urea is all good, which I'm very happy about. Um, one thing to note about this blood work, they woke me up on, like knocking on the door in the morning. That is very, very frustrating. I told them to come at 10, p at 10 a.m. so I could wake up at eight and have like a good couple liters of water. That really helps with the flushing. It really helps get a true reading of all of these things. So they're a little bit skewed, nothing crazy, but like, potentially impacted by, by hydration. So creatinine, um, a little bit high. Um, obviously I have red meat in my diet. I take creatine, they also train. So there's reasons why that might be a little bit high, but if it's on that top range of the reference range, being assisted, being a bodybuilder, I'm not super worried. It's just whether that, that trend continually goes up, which is more important than kind of where they lie. Obviously not if their life's super, super high, but the trend of it is it continually going up is the issue. Um, but as you can see here, iron is all good. Uric acid is all good. Uh, TIBC is good. Vitamin B12 is good. Amylase lipase is all good. CRP is good, though CRP is a really big indicator of inflammation in the body. So maybe there was some inflammation. I had a really hard massage the night before, which actually probably injured me a little bit. I've just come off an illness, take steroids. So this is not high, but you want that number as low as possible. All right, I'm in the middle range here at 3.5. So creatine kinase um, MB serum, it's a little bit high and you're gonna see this is high because if we scroll down, actual CPK creatine kinase here is, is pretty high up into the thousands. Um, not so worried about creatine kinase being super high, breaking down a lot of muscle, take, eating a lot of protein, training really hard, taking steroids. Like I've seen this number in the 5,000s, which is actually a, like Rambo, Rambo the Isis or whatever it is, it's basically muscle breakdown and muscle wastage. But like a normal number for like bodybuilders could be 500 to 1500, even if you're natural. So being a thousand, I had two days off, but clearly two days off wasn't enough to bring that number right down. Vitamin D is all good. I actually supplement with 5,000 IUs of vitamin D and it's still pretty low. So that would suggest to me that I don't absorb it or make it very well. So I need to spend a little bit more time in the sun, which I tried to do, but clearly it didn't work that much. And also take a little bit more vitamin D. So I'll probably bump that to like six or 7,000 and probably spend an extra 20 to 30 minutes in the sun every day if I can, because vitamin D is very, very important. But transfer, transfer and saturation, calcium, fer um, ferritin, all good, nothing to uh, be worried about. And then you've got my bun ratio. 
you know what, like bun to creatinine ratio is a, probably a little bit more important than something like EGFR. EGFR never gets or estimated filtration globular, right? Uh, never gets extrapolated across body weight, height, race, muscle mass. Yes, race really important, it actually matters. Um, so like a bun, a bun ratio is really good to measure. So I would definitely recommend getting a bun test or you could get a uh, cystatin C test to get a little bit more of an accurate uh, kidney marker. Then we got liver. So as you can see, everything's pretty good here apart from alanine transferase, which is slightly above that range. And then um, AST as well, aspartate amino transferase, slightly above uh, the reference range. Generally, they just are, you know, maybe to having elevated levels of kidney and liver markers for extended periods of time, years and years and years, isn't the best thing. That's maybe part of the risk that I take. Um, liver is very, very regenerative, so I back these. And again, like I said earlier, what's the trend there? Every time I get this blood test done, five, six times a year, maybe it's slightly elevated, but is it like just go skyrocketing? Is it trending upwards? That's the kind of the most important thing here because it might just mean that my body is slightly inflamed all the time because I train really hard and take steroids and, you know, have high muscle mass. So very, very important to know. But everything else here um, in a pretty good place. Like I'm, I'm not super, super worried with those um, all around. Then we've got cholesterol. So cholesterol was, was pretty important for me to, to rectify. Triglycerides, LDL were definitely really, really high. Almost double of what they were right now. So I've done really well to bring my triglycerides down to 107. The most optimal is like 150. So we're below that now, like 50% below that, which is really, really good. LDL as well, it's very, very clear that the short, sharp, small, small dose of statin that I was using has really brought that into a favorable position. 98, optimal is 100. Borderline high is up to 160, so we're well under that, which is really good to see. Now, HDL has improved since my last test, about five points, but it's still pretty low. HDL just takes a little bit more time to respond. And actually, a lot of talk about good and bad cholesterol potentially isn't legit. Uh, and there's a lot of research to say that you want to be checking things like APOB is a really, really good marker for cardiovascular disease and HDL and LDL are a little bit more irrelevant um, in terms of actual risk increase to cardiovascular disease. While they may be good indicators, I'd recommend getting further tests, which I should be doing and I will do later on this year, uh, later on early next year, sorry, to try and uh, get a little bit better estimate of cardiovascular disease. But, you know, it's always good to have a uh, an eye on those HDL and LDL. Obviously my cholesterol to HDL ratio is pretty high just because HDL is really low. So that ratio is always gonna be skewed. So I'm, I'm really not too worried at all. And I'm pretty happy about this cholesterol result. Probably the best cholesterol result I've had in a long while. So definitely the uh, interventions that I took worked, which is really, really good. Um, as you scroll down here, testosterone, obviously follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone rock bottom if you use exogenous hormone they're going to be rock bottom total testosterone is like just above that like really high range which is makes sense for 200 milligrams of testosterone so i'm pretty happy about that got some real gear for once <laughs> my prolactin is pretty damn high probably a little bit of intervention needed there in terms of prolactin prolactin can cause sex drive issues they can cause blood pressure issues water retention issues so i'll probably implement p5p which is the active form of B6, which would be really, really important to correct. You don't want to be running a long time with hyperlectin. And then progesterone, obviously, natural ranges. Uh, estrogen, a little bit lower in that middle range there. I probably expect that to be a little bit higher, but I'm not, not super worried about estrogen being a little bit low because obviously as I start to escalate my dose, that'll probably increase. And actually it probably shows that finally, <laughs> the Primo I've got is real. <laughs> so, you know, Primo modifies your androgen to estrogen ratio. So if you've got a bit more Primo in there, your estrogen may come down a little bit. So that may be good indication that it's real for once. Then we've got free, um, free thyroxine, trinidothyronine. That was a tongue twist. I'm glad I got that first time. Uh, and the thyroid, thyroid still, and I get the, the, the easy one wrong, thyroid stimulating hormone. All of these in range, the free thyroxine is still pretty high on the range, but you know, everything is, is all good with thyroid. And there is some indication that anabolics cream growth hormone, uh, insulin, things like that, using them can lead to hyperthyroidism, which is like fast thyroid. So I've been con not concerned, but mindful of what my thyroid is, and it's absolutely fine. 
So that concludes my blood work, concludes my blood work of eight weeks off. This for me, if I was receiving this as a coach, you're all good, time to blast. So I've sent this off to John, my coach, and I'm hoping I received all good time to blast. Yeah, we might have addressed the prolactin. Maybe the liver and kidney could have been in a better place if I was really, really hydrated. I wasn't, so I'm expecting those to be a little bit lower than, than, than what they are. But I think it's safe to say it's time to blast, guys. <laughs> Guys, if you enjoy this type of content, maybe you are someone who has assisted. I actually offer coaching services through this whole process from blood work to application of super supplements to cycling and everything along those lines. So if you are ever interested, guys, use that first link in the description box. Jump in for a call with me. We can talk over your goals, your aspirations, how we can get there, and then how the actual coaching process works. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. See you in the next one. Peace out, everybody.